So if you want to open your Book of Mormons, we're in 1 Nephi chapter 3, and we're going to back up just a little bit from what I suggested. Um, we're going to start at verse 183 and hopefully read to the end, but that will determine, that will be based on how our discussion goes, not necessarily that we need to finish in a specific time frame. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I shared some different versions of images of, of Nephi's dream, and um, I'm just using this one just because it's very clear and it's very easy to see. And there are things about it that we talked about that sort of represent maybe um, some important truths about God. Um, and so we have spent time talking about the tree of life and the rod of iron um, and talking about how that left side of that picture represent God, represents God's love and how the Lord wants us to be enticed by it, that we are enticed by that in a response to him. Um, and that uh, opposed to that, on the right side, um, is, is the, uh, the other plan, right? So we have God's plan on one side, and we have Satan's plan on the other side. Um, and so I think there are no. Um, even though this is a parable, um, there is a tree of life. And there is this um, unending love of God. Um, it's real. Um, and um, even though it's a parable, um, there is a great and spacious building. Um, and there is a great and abominable church. Um, it's real too. And we're either enticed by the one or the other. Um, we're either drawn towards one or the other. Um, we, we seek to one or the other. Um, and they're, they're opposed to each other. Uh, and we're going to hear a lot of that in this last part um, of, of Nephi's dream. Um, so we often think about Nephi's dream in terms of us in terms of uh, my response. And I think that's one important level to look at it, is um, me, as a believer, um, I'm gonna be respond by clinging to the rod of iron. Um, but there's, uh, I think there's another level to this, and it, I'll, I'll try to put it into words, is that um, there's a group, there's, there's more than one person here, right? So there's a group of believers, um, and they are the church of God, right? They are the believers in Christ. Um, they're, they're the church. And then there's the other side, right? Um, and this chapter uh, talks a lot about this great and abominable church. Um, and so one sort of tangential question I want to talk about as we finish here today is, what is the great and abominable church? What is this chapter talking about when it says great and abominable church? Um, so it mentions a lot of times, but we really won't be able to talk about that fully until we get to the end of the chapter. So I think that's pretty important for us to know. Um, so the Lord asks Nephi a really important question at the very end, or the angel asks Nephi a really important question at the end of this chapter, I want you to be thinking about it. I think it's a really important question. Do you remember the covenants of the Father unto the house of Israel? Um, so as, as Nephi sees the tree and the great superficial building, he's shown things about the things that are to come past his day until the end of days, right? He's shown these things, and the angel is reminding him that there are covenants of the Father to the house of Israel that are important to know. And those covenants are just as important to know today as they were for Nephi to understand. 
and uh, they're really helpful for us to understand what's going on now and what's going to come. So there's some really good, there's some really good things here. I'm just trying to, just trying to get us excited here. It's good stuff. Good things, good things. Um, so um, rather than read the whole thing like we had before, this is more of a chronological discussion. Um, and so we're going to need to read and then stop and then and discuss and see how far that goes and then we'll pick back up. So Nephi is seeing some information about his people and how they're going to stumble and, um, and fall away. And then he starts seeing about the Gentiles and how the Gentiles will come to interact with his people. Okay. So 183 sort of jumps right in the middle of that discussion about the Gentiles, right? He's prophesied that the Gentiles will come across the sea and they'll bring this Bible with them, right? This book, this book of the Jew, okay? So that's sort of where we're, we're picking up as the Gentiles are coming into this land with the Bible and that's where we're going to pick up. So... Uh, we have some microphones at every table, um, so we're going to need to use those when we talk so that people upstairs that can't come down can hear, or, and that as we record the class that we can hear. So. Well, you we should pick us up. We're trying it, at least. Oh, we're trying it. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to try to not move. So. Okay. We'll definitely pick everybody up. Okay. All right. We're going to try to see what happens if we don't move the microphones. Okay. Okay. Um, so would anyone volunteer to start at verse 183 and read until I stop them? Okay, Neil. And after the Gentiles do stumble exceedingly because of the most plain and precious parts of the gospel of the Lamb, which has been kept back by that abominable church, which is the mother of harlots, saith the Lamb, I will be merciful unto the Gentiles in that day, insomuch that I will bring forth unto them in mine own power much of my gospel, which shall be plain and precious, saith the Lamb. For behold, saith the Lamb, I will manifest myself unto thy seed, that they shall write many things which I shall minister unto them, which shall be plain and precious. And after thy seed shall be destroyed and dwindle in unbelief, and also the seed of thy brethren, behold, these things shall be hid up to come forth unto the Gentiles, by the gift and power of the Lamb. And in them shall be written my gospel, saith the Lamb, and my rock and my salvation. Salvation. <clears throat> and blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion at that day, for they shall have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. And if they endure unto the end, they shall be lifted up at the last day and shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. And whoso shall publish peace Yea, tidings of great joy. How beautiful upon the mountains shall they be. All right, we'll stop there. Um, gosh, it's probably a class right there. All right, so what is Nephi seeing? Well, he's seeing us. I mean, he's seeing what's going on, but really he's seeing, you know, the pilgrims are really the first Gentiles here that interact with the house of Israel, the Indians. So those are really the first ones. I, I mean, technically, England England was in Jamestown before, but there really wasn't that much, inter- a lot of fighting, but not that much interaction. So he's seeing that. I, I personally believe he also saw Joseph Smith, and he saw us, and how, you know, because, I mean, we are the Gentiles also, so... I think he's seeing it as a whole. Um, I, I'd like to know what he thought um, because, I mean, really all the Gentiles have done have fought the entire time over uh, his word about who was right, and if they didn't think they were right, they started a new church. So it would be interesting to get Nephi's perspective as a 16-year-old seeing in his dream what was going on with the Gentiles. Yeah, there's no commentary there. So he's seen us. We're the Gentiles. This is... This is us. What else is he seeing? It was 
seeing the plates being hit away. Okay, so yeah, there's this understanding that his people, and this is the very beginning, there's not much people there, but his people will create a record and it will contain the gospel, something that's plain and pure and precious. At this time, he's not even married and have kids. <laughs> well, he's 17, yeah, maybe 18 he doesn't years have old. People yet. Yeah, he's still mm -hmm. born. They're not, e they're not even, they're not even they're over not here even yet. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So he sees the Book of Mormon, right? Okay. So he sees that the word that his people will leave in some way will come to us. Um, and uh, we're reminded uh, that this word is a gift. Uh, this Book of Mormon is a gift. And it has a purpose. Its, it's purpose, like we talked about in our first class, is to is to bring all people to a knowledge of Jesus Christ, um, to a knowledge of the Savior, um, and right to help the Jews understand that the Lord has not forgotten them, that the covenants that he laid out for them um, will be fulfilled, that he, you know, he's still there, that those are still valid. And so it describes this gospel and this, this, this gospel that will be in this book in really important terms so that we understand why it's valuable and why it needs to be shared. There's a really important word in here that I think comes into play here in a little bit, and it's in verse 183, which is why I backed up, right? I will be merciful unto the Gentiles that day. Why? Because the Bible they have, right, has been changed. It's been uh, confused. It, things, the pr plain and precious things have been removed from it. Um, so it's a stumbling block to them. So they can, it's good, it's, it's a wonderful book, but it's a stumbling block because there are things about f how to follow Christ that, they, that gen the Gentiles will stumble about because they don't have a, all of the information. Um, and we could see that, right, in other churches. There's, there's a sincere desire and belief there, but they struggle so much with um, some of those, uh, some of the, the how to respond, right, and uh, doctrinal beliefs. And so uh, different denominations have their own sort of take on what the response to Christ should be. Um, Again, they're directed towards him. Though they're, they're seeking him. Uh, I think his spirit is there, but they stumble. They struggle with some of those beliefs. But this word, um, I will bring uh, uh, forth to them in mine own power much of my gospel, and it shall be plain and precious, saith the Lamb. So... We'll, we'll, we'll see that here in a minute. But what does much of my gospel mean to you? I was going to say, yeah, that's right here. I mean, this is, this is it right here. Um, you know, just as you said, you know, this is a gift. I don't, you know, there's been times, like, I think our church hasn't treated this as a gift. But, um, I, I mean, it truly is a gift. It's truly his gospel. Um, and it's truly the truth. And um, we're never going to move forward if we don't look at it as that. It, it, this is the key, but so much. Okay. What does it mean? What do you mean? underline the word much and have the words not all. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so we'll hear here in a minute, okay, about some things that have to happen. Things that have to happen. And when we look at prophecy, this Brian's take, if I read this and I try to fit what's already happened into it, but it, it doesn't fit right, then, then it can't be that. Right? We try to fit what we've experienced and seen into these things and say, well, that's that. But if it doesn't fit fully, then, um, then, it's, not, then it's not that. Right? So 
what we're going to read about is more coming and what that more will do. Okay. So um, we well, have I this. I was going to rip real quick if I could. Mm -hmm. Just like you were saying, I mean, the Mormons, were, as, after Joseph died, Brigham Young, they tried to use prophecy from the Book of Mormon as their reason for polygamy. And um, Corey brought that up in his class that he's teaching at Colburn Road of how they were using that. But, I mean, you look at the Baptist, they use the rapture, and they, they take words that are in the Bible, and they say, this is why this is happening. And, and I think you're exactly right when you, when you say, you know, if it's not exact, then it's, it's, that's not it. And I think so many times we try to twist some words in the English language to make it what we want it to be. And it's not that meant. God, God has always been exact and to the point. He's never made anything open for interpretation. Yes. Um, and I missed the last class. I have two two uh, paragraphs. Before we got to 183, there's two that I had underlined. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the hardest things that we face. Mm -hmm. uh, and these two both repeat the same thing about the plain and precious things being taken out mm -hmm. of the Book of the Lamb. And the center line is that it says, after the plain and precious things were taken away, it goeth forth unto all the nations of the Gentiles. It's, it's one of the biggest stumbling blocks that we have because a lot of Christian denominations get up and they hold the Bible up and they say, this is the word of God, nothing else is the word of God. This, and, and yet we know that it's a flawed version of the word of God. And until people are willing to accept that there could be flaws in it, or it could be, it could be, yes, it is the word of God. It was written inspired. But because it was manipulated sometime in the past, they don't have everything that was supposed to be in it. And that's a hard, hard object to overcome. With, with our Christian brothers. Mm -hmm. So that's why this, these coming verses are so, so amazing is because the Lord takes care of that. Um, and he addresses that stumbling block. Um, this book is part of it, right? It's the beginning of that, but it's not the, it's not the whole thing, right? There's more, there's more there. Um, so those are, those are great. Um, something to hang on to. For you and I, um, even though we haven't seen the full, um, the full impact of the gospel and this truth, um, we, so we have this, this, we have this beautiful gospel, and it's been given to the church to uphold uh, and to share, and we haven't done that very well, um, as we should have, but... Um, Words to you, right, I believe. Words to you, right? Blessed are they who seek to bring forth my Zion. It doesn't say that Zion will be here, right, just because we're going to want it, right? But we're going to seek for Zion, right? And uh, the Lord will bless those who endure to the end um, and are seeking the Lamb. So... We believe this gospel that is plain and pure and precious, and we seek, we seek it. We live it. We stand for that. We try to share it. Um, and for those who seek for that, right, we have, there's a promise there. There's a promise that they shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. So we want to publish peace. We want, uh, we want to publish this gospel. We want to stand for it this plain, pure, and precious gospel. Um, I think that's encouragement for, for us right now, this moment. Okay. Um, so, who wants to continue with 190? Okay. Good. And it came to pass that I beheld the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the book of the Lamb of God, which had proceeded forth from the mouth of the Jews. And I beheld that it came forth from the Gentiles unto the remnant of thy seed of my brethren. And after it had come forth unto them, I beheld other books which came forth by the power of the Lamb from the Gentiles unto them, unto the convincing of the Gentiles and the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also to the Jews which were scattered upon all the face of the earth, that the record of the prophet and the twelve apostles of the Lamb are true. And the angel spake unto me, saying, these last records which thou have seen among the Gentiles shall establish the truth of the first 
which are of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And it shall make known the plain and precious things which have taken away from them. And shall make known to all kindred, tongue, and people that the Lamb of God is the eternal Father and the Savior of the world. And that all men must come unto him, or they cannot be saved. And they must come according to the word which shall be established by the mouth of the Lamb. And the word of the Lamb shall be made known in the record of thy seed, as well as the records of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Wherefore, both shall establish in one, for there is one God and one shepherd over the earth. And, there, and the time cometh that he shall manifest himself unto all nations, both unto the Jews and also unto the Gentiles. And after he had manifest himself unto the Jews and also unto the Gentiles, then he shall manifest himself unto the Gentiles and also unto the Jews. And the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. All right, we'll stop there. Thoughts about that section? I'm going to say the last, the last 200, I think. I, I have that highlighted. Um, and, you know, where he's saying the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You know, I think so many times we, we try to be, you know, I, I describe it as high school. You know, when you want to be the popular kid. But it's okay not to be the popular kid. It's okay to be last. Um, because in the end, um, we're going to be different. And if you look at us compared to all the other religions in the world, yeah, we're different. But that's the way God made it. And that's what I've always held on to when I've seen all my friends go to different churches. Or I've seen my friends who were with me here go to different churches. You know, what, what's kept me here? That is right there. You know, we're going to be different. And, you know, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. It's not about popularity. It's not about anything like that. It's always about being different. And we're always going to be different. But God made it that way. So the gospel will go from the Jews to the Gentiles, the Gentiles to the Jews. And there's a... There's a pretty mighty there's a pretty mighty prophecy here. Um, these last records which thou hast seen among the Gentiles so stravest the truth of the first, which are of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, and shall make known the plain and precious things which have been taken away from them, and shall make known to all kindreds, tongues, and people that the Lamb of God is the Son of the Eternal Father and the Savior of the world, and that all men must come unto him or they cannot be saved. So I guess I'll ask, is that the condition of the world at this time? Have the, have the Jews been convinced um, that Jesus is the Christ? No. no. Okay. Some of them. Some of them. Yeah, there's growing numbers. <laughs> well, Corey, Corey brought up in his podcast that he does with Mike Barrett that uh, his website in the Hebrew Book of Mormon is getting hits in Israel because he can track by IP addresses where people are viewing his website. And he was talking about that the Hebrew Book of Mormon is getting hits there in Israel. So um, now we, we don't know how they're finding it or anything like that, but I mean, we know they're finding it. So, you know, Corey and I have talked about this. You know, how is it that God is going to take, you know, that these people who, who, don't, who, I mean, obviously don't believe in the Book of Mormon have nothing to, I mean, they don't even follow the original religion right now. And are all of a sudden going to change these people to where they're going to believe this. And they're going to be God's chosen people because that's his covenant people. How is that going to change? And, you know, he was just in New York and he was driving through um, the area in New York where the, the, the Jews are. And you just see despair and, you know, you, you kind of feel like, you know, they've lost hope. 
um, just by some some of the pictures um, they have. But one of the things I've I've said is at one time the Lamanites were more righteous than the Nephites. The Nephites were God's chosen people, not the Lamanites. But at one time the Lamanites were more righteous than the Nephites. And I think that's one of God's ways showing, hey, you know, to us. I can take a people who know nothing about me and change them. So that's why I've always held on to that. Yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take something, but it, it can only be through the power of God that it can change. Mm -hmm. So what I find interesting as I read and read and read and read this, we have this, we have this comment that much of my gospel will come forth to the Gentiles. Um, um, and we sort of hear this again in section 45, which we won't get into today. Um, we, but, but then we hear um, books shall come forth by the power of the Lamb. Um, and, and to the convincing of the Gentiles, right, and the Jews, um, uh, that the Bible is true, right, that the records of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, right, are true. Um, something, that, uh, something that will address this stumbling block um, that the Gentiles have of the things that have been altered or the plain and precious truths that will be taken out of the Bible. Um, something that will prove the truth of, of all of these things. Something that, that this church has been proclaiming for over almost 200 years. Right? But we don't have the condition now that the whole world knows and is convinced that Jesus is the, the, the savior of the world. That, that is not the condition of the world now. Right? Um, historians even can't or don't acknowledge that Jesus was necessarily a real historical figure. Right? So when we talk about or we think about those scriptures that talk about truth coming forth out of the earth and righteousness filling the earth as with a flood, right? Um, there is, um, it's almost like there is this piece of evidence and this piece of evidence and this piece of evidence. And then there will be the thing that proves that all along that those things were true. Okay. Um, and, and so, like, so we, and we'll see this here in, in a minute, but, like, there's a response that's good, that we're going to see to that truth. So it's proclaimed. It's sent abroad. So everybody knows it. But yet there's, a, there's still choosing that's going to take place. So we need to read just a little bit more here. Uh, so we're going to have this. Um, I believe that this is, this is yet to be finished, that this part is, is yet before us, that there are yet, there are yet more records or yet um, more, uh, more there, there's something that will establish that all of these things that have already been set out um, are the truth. Well, Brian, the original record that the Nephites had of the people that, or the people of the Jews that Lehi and Nephi brought over is somewhere in Central America that have not been found. And if it is found and we do have the ability to translate, I mean, that will be... Oh, the those truth. those bra those brass plates. The, well, mm -hmm. yeah, the brass plates mm -hmm. yeah. that had that had the, the history of the Jews. That, yeah. I mean that that is that is just as the same thing as as what the Book of Mormon was because it's going to be exactly what was written down. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, right, the Book of Mormon has always been a book that the Lord has asked us to to take on faith, uh, to to read. 
it, it, it was never presented as, here's, here's this book, and let me prove you it's true, right? Um, read it, and my spirit will tell you it's true, right? Um, but there will be a time that this is talking about that no one will be able to deny that this plan that has been prophesied all along, that has been prophesied by the Book of Mormon, that is talked about by the, in the Bible, that it is true, right? And that those things have been established from the beginning. All right. Um, we need to continue reading, um, starting at 201. Why don't you put it up close to you? And it shall come to pass that if the Gentiles shall hearken unto the Lamb of God in that day, that he shall manifest himself unto them in word and also in power, in very deed, unto the taking away of their stumbling blocks, and harden not their hearts against the Lamb of God, they shall be numbered, numbered among the seed of thy father. Yea, they shall be numbered among the house of Israel, and they shall be a blessed people upon the promised land forever. They shall be no more brought down into captivity, and the house of Israel shall no more be confounded. And that great pit which hath been digged for them by that great and abominable church, which was founded by the devil and his children, that he might lead away the souls of men down into hell. Yea, that great pit which hath been digged for the destruction of men shall be filled by those who digged it, unto their utter destruction, saith the Lamb of God. Not the destruction of the soul, save it be the casting of the into that hell which hath no end. For behold, this is according to the captivity of the devil, and also according to the justice of God upon those who will work wickedness and abomination before him. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, Nephi, saying, Thou hast beheld that if the Gentiles repent, it shall be well with them. And thou also knowest concerning the covenants of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And thou also hast heard that whoso repenteth not must perish. Therefore, woe be unto the Gentiles, if it so be that they harden their hearts against the Lamb of God. For the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on one hand or the other, either unto the convincing of them unto peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, unto their being brought down into captivity and also unto destruction, both temporally and spiritually, according to the captivity of the devil, of which I have spoken. And it came to pass that when the angel had spoken these words, he said unto me, Remember thou the covenants of the Father unto the house of Israel? And I said unto him, Yea. And it came to pass that he said unto me, Look, and behold that great and abominable church, which is the mother of abominations, whose founder is the devil. And he said unto me, Behold, there, have, there are saved two churches only. One is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. All right. Now read one more. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God belongeth to that great church, which is the mother of abominations. Okay. So there's two churches only. And we'll, maybe we'll talk about it another time. Um, but there's two ends only, right? In the end, there's two enticements. There's two things that we can seek to. The church of God or the church of, of what do we call them? <laughs> church of the devil. Okay. Um, so... We'll talk more about this question here if we have time. But so, what's what's going on here is it, in this last section we read about this idea that um, knowledge through the Gentiles will go to the Jews, convincing the Gentiles and the Jews that Jesus is the Christ, right? And then towards the end of what Jenny just read, right. He talks about that again. A great and marvelous work. Um, uh, I will work a great and marvelous work among the children of men. 
a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or the other, either to the convincing of them of life, unto li peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, unto their being brought down into captivity. So, um, here's how I read that, and we can discuss that a little bit. Truth is presented to the earth about this Christ, about this God, right? Truth that is, is plain and pure, but it's obvious. As that truth is presented, there is still decision to be made. There is still a choice to be made whether I care or not. whether I accept that truth or not. So I, I, I read that as, as this truth is brought forth, there were still people that will choose to not accept it because they don't want to. Thoughts on that? Well, just a couple of things. It's, it's probably one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks to our church is it, it seems that when uh, we know it's a great and marvelous work, how come it doesn't appear great and marvelous? Um, when we know that there's two churches only, how does it come to pass that it seems like the good one is now almost non-existent and the bad one clearly appears to be worldwide and, and dominating? And, I, and it's a matter of perception maybe on our part, but at the same time, I think that's why we have to be faithful and a patient and endure to the end because we won't get to see righteousness sweep the earth of the flood. We won't get to see that balance re, re, re set. We won't get to see the great marvelous results of this work if we aren't patient and faithful and endure to the end. So the, the choosing hasn't really been placed upon most of the earth yet. Mm -hmm. It hasn't hasn't come to them that way yet. Um, the few the few who have been in, in that face of that choice, it's a great and marvelous work to us. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not. But but if we perceive things by how we judge most things in the world, it doesn't seem to be that that's happened in the world yet. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring up. I always talk with my uh, my dad about the future of the church, and even even when I was younger. And, you know, it talks about, you know, another person coming. And, you know, I always ask my dad, you know, hey, so what do you think? Do you think this would be another prophet? You know, because, I mean, we still have a, technically we still have a prophet still on the earth that has the blood. Um, but I always remember him telling me, he goes, well, I'm not going to believe it until I hear it from Jesus Christ himself. And I've always kept that in my mind because I've always felt, well, we have faith. You know, we have faith that these things are going to happen. Just like, you know, you were just talking about, you know, the promise is in the last, cha the last chapter of the book with, in Moroni where it says, if you pray and you ask, he will give you a testimony. And, but you have to have faith. And I, I think that's what we have to have also is, is faith that these things are going to happen. And even as bad as it gets, I mean, these things are still going to happen. So there's... There's sort of an order here, but it's not, it's not, it's not prescribed so much that it's like, uh, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, right? We're given the broad scope of things to understand where they're going. And, and Larry, I'll let you talk a second because I know we need to go upstairs. But um, what Neil's talking about is verse 226. Despite this truth, there's a choosing. And despite the choosing, right, I beheld that the church of the Lamb of God and its numbers were few because of the wickedness and abominations of this great and abominable church, right? So despite the truth that's given and despite the, the opportunity to choose with this truth, the, the, the true followers of, of the Lord are, are, are not uh, the majority. Okay. 
Well, we see that in today's actions. There's not a family that's not sitting around this table that doesn't have extended family that was raised in this church. I think there's a lot of times that the Book of Mormon was brought about and taught that, oh, I've got something more to present to someone else. That's good. But it also was to be presented to us to be assure us of the of the New Testament. And the New Testament is Jesus' love for for all mankind. The renewal of the scriptures. The Old Testament tells us all, a lot about ancestry and how the world came about and all that. But uh, the New Testament tells about how one person, the Son of God, came to the earth to give us a chance to renew our covenant with God mm -hmm. and have a... Now, out of many, many families, we they have been raised in the church, and yet they're not here. How many do we see that we thought few years ago were mighty uh, professors of this, and they're not active, and I'm not putting them down, I'm mm -hmm. saying this is a time of true trial that people are going through, and the few, the many are few, the many are few. So we might think about, you know, sort of in closing, like, how is it that you could be presented with the truth but not choose it? How could you be presented with this gospel and the knowledge that there is a God and knowledge that there's a Savior and not choose it? But Satan's been working really hard over here, right? To, to have his own set of beliefs, right? To, to build up his own church in this earth. Um, and this own set of beliefs in this, church, in this earth, and we can sort of see it today, right? It's not so hard to see, like, the, this pride uh, of, the, of men, right, sort of rising in, in opposition to the plan of happiness. Uh, so the foundation is there. Um, but, you know, all of this is to remind us that God's plan, right, this, the, the things that are, which are before us, right, he knew them. I mean, they're, they're already set out, right? And we're in a specific place in that. And there's a specific response to that with what do we do with this plain and precious gospel? And how do we, how do we proclaim it and live it? Um, so I think that, you know, that hopefully is reassuring to us um, that there are things that um, the Lord has done and is continuing to do on behalf of his people. Do you want to have the last word? Well, I think as time goes on, that things will become more and more those lines and the difference will become more and more plain and more and more obvious. And there yep. will be that, that delineation, or however you want to say that, that, okay, yeah, things are becoming more and more obvious and you'll either choose this way or you'll choose that way, mm -hmm. depending on where you're at testimony that you have you know within you because that's that's what's going to be your foundation you know what's your what's your faith built on what's your testimony built on do you know that Jesus is the Christ do you know that he is the savior of the world you know have you been convinced of that yet in your life how has that impacted you so anyway it's good so again we're the Lord wants us to be enticed by his son, by his love, um, by the things that we can enjoy when we're in his presence. Um, and that is the great plan of happiness, this, this peace and freedom that he offers. Um, and we want to seek to that, to make sure that we partake of it and know of its goodness and are unwilling to let go of that rod of iron. Um, so we'll keep going. We'll finish this off, sort of wrap up this discussion because there's a fairly good amount that's left um, and we'll try to put some things in context so next week all right